Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Dubious Engineering. Here's an interesting one. This is a monstrous power pack. Let me just show you. This has an inverter inside of it, a, a, a torch in it, a 12 volt car cigarette lighter. Turning it over and we get four USB ports, a power button charge port, and then on the top we have a little light switch. This has been very kindly sent in by a good friend of mine who loves his fishing. Let's tear it apart. Let's have a look at it. But first of all, a big thank you to Paul and a picture of his enormous fish that he caught. Merry Christmas, folks. Yes, indeed. It's cold and flu season. Watch all the way to the end of the video and you'll get a chance to win this this wonderful Venlabs multimeter. I will post it to you free of charge. You could be the lucky winner. But if we read some of the details on this, then it's Power Packs Limited uh, Solar Generator System, model number RA15026. The capacity is a ginormous a 78,000 milliamp hours, or uh, roughly translated as 78 amp hours. Uh, 150 uh, watts of power out. I guess that'll be with reference to the uh, mains inverter that's uh, inside it. And we also have 12 volts at 10 amps, USB 5 volts. And then we've got a 15 volt, 4 amp charge input on it. So yeah, it's really quite an interesting little beastie. We've got airflow. We actually have a fan uh, built in here as well. Pretty solid sort of ABS plastic. So a nice case. We'll, we'll definitely be repurposing this. Paul gave it to me because it doesn't work. It stopped doing its thing. Right, let's get into the electronic side. This is the bit that we all really want to see. So that 7800 milliamp hour cell is in here. Um, and that, whoops, and, that, and there's a little torch uh, here. Sorry, I didn't mean to pull that apart. We'll, we'll actually be putting that back in. But ultimately, we've got a little lens here and uh, a little LED, which is fitted to an aluminium heatsink. So, uh, so that's one of those little three watt LEDs. There. They're actually quite bright. Uh, we've got a, we've got a, a switch here for the, for the torch, which is quite literally just a little pretzel switch. We have here a, a multi adapter for UK, European, American, and various other mains. Uh, no earth on it at all, obviously. Uh, just um, positive and negative, sorry, positive and negative. I mean, uh, live and neutral. Uh, and then uh, we have a, a, a DC lighter socket, a 10 amps. Uh, so you wouldn't actually want to put a cigarette lighter in there. Uh, it, wouldn't, um, it wouldn't work. In fact, it would probably uh, blow a fuse or auto power down either which way. So if we have a look at the front of this here, we can see there's a control panel with an on-off switch and nothing's actually working at the moment. We'll test the battery voltage in a minute and see what's happening. Uh, when Paul gave this to me, uh, it had a 100% charge written on the top of it here every time you touched a button. Uh, but Paul says that ultimately it just sort of stopped working. It stopped doing its thing. It didn't sense anything and it wouldn't turn on. But yeah, let's have a look at this PCB. Interesting. All right, front panel uh, just whoops, fell out. And there's a little bit of uh, plastic there to protect the, the seven segment LED type display. Actually, weirdly, looking at that seven segment LED display, it's a custom built. Again, it's a 100 uh, uh, up to 100 here, and it's got a percentage sign. It's got AC out written on it, USB 2.1 amps, and in written on it. So that's all quite interesting. These four USB ports here, and you can see uh, ultimately what we've got here then, those chips and coil combinations there and there will be buck converters. Uh, and yeah, nothing's lighting up. Everything is still live at the moment. I've, I've, the battery is still plugged in, so we need to be a little bit careful. There's no obvious signs of chip damage when you start looking at the PCB. Um, so, I mean, obviously, you know, there's a little bit of sort of um, a flux on the PCB where some of the larger terminals have been hand soldered in place and that kind of thing. Uh, but there's, there's no obvious reason why this is not working. There's no uh, brain burn marks or anything like that. I already disconnected the fan, which was uh, on the other case. At the bottom of the PCB here, then, uh, we've got one, two, three, four MOSFETs, which are connected to the step up transformer ultimately. And uh, the whole idea of all of this is to take whatever's coming out of this battery here, turn it into AC, step it up to uh, 240 volts. So yeah, that's really quite cute. An awful lot of microchips on here. There's a lot of intelligence uh, in, in, in this device. Um, but sadly, uh, that complication and that intelligence ultimately means that, that this PCB has failed somewhere. And it, it will take me ages to try and understand where it's failed, why it's failed, 
and uh, uh, I'm trying to get a spare chip for this and, and the appropriate firmware for that chip will be almost impossible. So what we're going to do is we're going to repurpose this unit and we're going to make use of this battery and we're going to put some of our own little PCBs inside here. We're going to turn it into a huge, great big uh, lithium ion pack that we can take camping with us and charge our phones from. My wife is persistently on her iPad and her phone. So we're going to have USB-C out. We're going to upgrade this because it only had uh, USB-A on it. We're going to upgrade this to USB-A and USB-C, multiple ports uh, and, and various other things. Uh, and, okay, let's get a multimeter on this battery pack here and see what kind of voltage it's reading. It's an old Fluke 77 that came from a, a marine vessel. Uh, in fact, I think it came from a military marine vessel. Okay, so we've got 12.3 volt. See, that's looking like the battery is in good shape. The other thing is when we uh, carefully pull this battery out, we can see here a number of different cables, just making sure I'm not gonna short anything out. We've got, ooh, we've got two blacks, one red, and then we've got a couple of cables here. I reckon these are likely going to be thermal sensors, but they could be, they could be battery balance connectors. Um, so, oh, hello, this has got something written on the back of it. <laughs> Let's just read that. Does that say 76 amp hour? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this says a 78, 78 amp hour. Uh, so does that look like does that look like 78 amp hour to you? First off, let's figure out what these thin cables are here. Okay, I found out what these um, what these are for actually, and uh, it's for balance charging. If I put a negative on the on the on the battery terminal here, hopefully you can see the meter. Yeah, so I'm going for the small red cable, and the small red cable is showing us four volts. And the black cable here is showing us 8.2 volts, and then. The final one will be 12.3 volts. Those um, those cables there are for uh, for charge balancing this huge battery pack. So just to quickly sort of try and explain charge balancing is inside this battery pack cell there are going to be three sets of four volt batteries, three fours of 12 let's say. They'll probably be 4.2 when they're fully charged and maybe down at 3.6 volts when they're depleted. So there'll be one run of 18650s, another run of 18650s about the size of my finger and another run of 18650s down there. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what we've got going on here. Uh, what we do need to do is, 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 is try and secure this now uh, and protect ourselves or protect it from going bang in the night. I've already taped up the, uh, the, the, two, uh, the two small cables. Negative, it's not ground, it's negative. And uh, let's tape that up immediately. <laughs> we, don't, we, we definitely don't want either of those two uh, shorting together. Paul, this, this, this bit here is going in a bin uh, because it's just gonna take me way too much time to try and figure out what the problem was with this PCB. Uh, or I might try and salvage a few parts out of it. So what we are gonna keep for the project, we're obviously gonna keep the LED and its associated lens here. Everything from China has a light on it. We're also gonna go ahead and keep a cigarette lighter socket. We're going to keep our uh, little uh, pretzel switch here at the top. And we're gonna use that uh, for the LED. So uh, we'll put that in place. I'd like to put maybe a decent piece of decent piece of plastic in there. I'm sure I've either got some plastic or some wood or something that I can glue in place. Well, I found some aluminium aluminum plate and some tin snips. So I'm gonna go ahead and make up a cover to fit that gaping hole here. Check that out. <clears throat> this is what we've ended up with. A bit of a brushed aluminium face plate and uh, almost like a, an elevator type button, which has got an LED in it. So uh, yeah, really quite uh, impressed with the look of that. So what we have here then, this little PCB is a BNS, a 20 amp, 12 volt 
BMS. And what it does is, as I mentioned before, there are three sets of batteries in that large pack, uh, and this will take care of all of those three sets of batteries, make sure they're all charged at sensible levels. And also, if there's any shorting going on on the outputs, or any overcharging or undercharging going on, then this will turn things off and uh, manage everything and make things safe. Uh, which is actually quite important. Time to bust out the soldering iron and uh, we're going to use one of my battery powered soldering irons here. We just plug it in to a, a, a Makita battery uh, and then we can turn on that soldering iron. As you can see the temperature starts to come up and we've got some, some solder and all that kind of good stuff. So let's get into this. One thing that we need to do here is make sure that we get each battery connected to the correct terminal of the battery management circuit. So each parallel set of batteries needs to be connected to the correct input on here. Uh, so I would say um, we, if we go, just having a quick look at the, 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 the meter over here, not sure if you can see that, I'll slide the, slide the camera across a little bit. But uh, put that on there, that's a zero volts, and hopefully this should be, ah, right, okay, so that's the wrong one. So uh, that's the 8.2, or the 8.4 volt terminal. So this is the terminal that, uh, that we want. If we just connect that up correctly, hopefully we'll see on the meter there, yeah, we've got 4.1 or 4.2 volts. So uh, this is the red one. Ooh, let's not let any of these touch each other. So just uh, tin, tinning up that, uh, that connector there. Loads of smoke going up towards the camera. <laughs> oh, okay, everybody stop moving. <laughs> this is hard enough. This is hard enough without everything moving around. All right, come on. Let's get that in there. 4.2 volts on this terminal. Let's get in here for a slightly closer look then. So what have I done? I've wired up the three different banks of batteries into the uh, battery management circuit. I still have yet to wire up uh, a, a connector into the battery management circuit to get power in and out of the battery management circuit. However, whoops, <laughs> I just gave away, I think maybe I just gave away what, what else I've been doing. So it has a, a little heat sink on the back of it. It's got a lovely little lens to it. And I didn't want that not to work. So I spent some time just wiring that up. So what I've done is I've, I've gone through the handle switch here, which you can see working. And I've routed these cables into uh, one section of the battery, which is uh, the 4.2 uh, volt section of the battery. Now we have a flat out high power LED torch, <laughs> which will last for a very, very long time. But it's nice to have that feature working again. So there's still plenty of work to do, but ultimately I've very dodgily wired in the switch without any heat shrink sleeving or anything like that at the moment. Uh, but that runs down here and connects effectively to the lighter socket now. Uh, so we've got 12 volts out of the lighter socket and we have a, a usable LED. Well, excuse the sound of a 3D printers. That's because there's loads of 3D printers running in this room uh, or making stuff that I sell. Um, so I've made some pretty good progress. I'm, I'm sort of having a little bit of a rejig and a rewire here. Uh, now I've managed to get the LED working, working on the switch, which is great news. And I also have here a little backlit LCD display that tells me how much battery capacity and what battery voltage is in the battery. Uh, in order to get the uh, LED working in the switch, I managed to find upstairs a 1K resistor, which gets that 12 volts down to a couple of volts for the LED. And that's about perfect. So yeah, 
really starting to make some good progress here. These are the USB-C devices that I plan to put in there. They're USB-A and USB-C and they offer uh, 65 watts to 100 watts of USB-C at full power. Uh, really quite impressive little devices, super fast chargers for phones, laptops, tablets, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, really, really looking forward to getting this project finished up. USB-C and A, USB-C and A two units, uh, uh, an LED driving this little panel switch here, a voltage capacity meter, we've got a, a, a light, we've got a cigarette lighter socket, we've got a main socket that doesn't work. We need to figure out now how to get all of this lot back in the box. And I've done my best to try and keep it safe by putting heat shrink sleeving over all of the connectors and that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be fun sort of trying to cram it all back in the box. I went ahead and made a template out of paper that fits the, uh, fits the meter perfectly. And then I found the right space on the box and I've put tape down. I don't know if you can see this, but I put a bit of black tape down now. Uh, and now I'm going to have to dremel a hole in the box. Okay, let's uh, see if we can punch this hole out. Ooh. All right, let's turn it on and see if it fires up. Ah, uh, yeah. And more case chopping so we can fit these uh, little USB PCBs in place. Ladies and gentlemen, again, Merry Christmas. In the comments below, in order to win this digital multimeter, I would like you to write the words that were written on that blue plastic battery. Uh, whatever you think they are, chuck them in the comments down below, and I will get the wife to pick one of the correct winners from random, and I will send this to you as a little Chrissy Prezi. Cheers and beers. Well, folks, here it is, the power pack. Atom 78 amp hour 12 volt lithium ion power pack uh, slightly modified could have done a slightly nicer job of putting my USB-C ports in here but uh, it was all sort of glue and fix that kind of stuff so I've put a, a, a flat piece of 3D printed waste over the hole where the uh, main socket was the 12 volt lighter socket is now the charge port and also um, a 20 amp output port 20 amp i say that with my tongue in my cheek knowing that board is probably less than 20 amps we've got a nice little battery voltage monitor on it here so we know what capacity is left in the unit and we've got our on off switch here which is like a an elevator or a lift fascia plate with a nice red led button in it so yeah reasonably pleased with the way this has turned out might have to sort of see if i can tweak the uh the the, the meter there also uh also we have a very bright light on it here as well which is controlled by this push button but all in all this is again now a solid and reasonably serviceable beastie um so yeah i'm quite looking forward to to using this on camping trips and uh uh, probably keep this in the camper van actually it's uh, quite a beast in fact i might even use it around the house for a while see how we get on with it anyway as always ladies and gentlemen thank you ever so much for watching dubious engineering again a massive thanks and a big shout out to paul ox love you dude take care keep enjoying the fishing and uh, don't forget thumbs up subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video cheers and beers folks bye for now